something I occasionally do with Sam. Sometimes I bring him in the kitchen to visit. And sometimes I play video of another African Grey for him. This is Einstein Parrot. So here's the thing. I'm eight weeks behind on my vlog video. Because it takes, you know, four to eight hours for the software to load the video clip. Sometimes, 12 hours later, I'm tired. Maybe it's loaded it, but I'm not going back to it. So the next morning when I wake up, the computer has crashed. And now I will have to start the app, load the videos, come back to it again tonight. That's why I'm so far behind. It's bath time for me. Um, got the lush bubble bath. Dan finally installed the sink. He still needs to build a cabinet around it so that we can stow stuff away and hide some of the plumbing. So I've made two of these. I just pulled out one to show you. I still have to sand them, prime them, and paint them. These are going to go on the trailer and they'll stick out uh, around where the fenders do, maybe slightly more, giving me a place to s install a ladder and a solar panel. I don't much care for the spirit gum. It's kind of, I wouldn't call it making me high because it's not pleasant, but you know, the fumes, the fumes are a bit much. However, for the rest part, there I am, dressed in drag for Halloween. What do you think? Pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> I have red shoes to go with the red tie. Yesterday, while wearing my, uh, you know, dressed in drag, and for some reason people seemed extra nice to me. Now, it might have been that I was walking more confidently and, and looking at people, socializing better because I felt good about myself. All I know is I really enjoyed wearing, like being dressed that way. The, the tie, the dress shirt. Um, the the nice comfy old blazer jacket and the comfy old wool old man pants. I mean, I felt like me. It was kind of neat. And I was going to crazy glue the parts together. I just about burned myself on the th this thing. Almost burned me. <laughs> so I'm gonna glue these parts together, and instead I glued my thumb. Okay, so I googled it, and it turns out that. The solution is nail polish remover. Is it working? It's not working. That stuff is bonded. I really thought it would be easier than this. Oh man. I don't think I tore the skin. That thing is on there real tight. Okay. Enough filming. Well, I did it. It took me a while, and it was very delicate, and there were points there where I really thought I was going to hurt myself. I managed to keep my skin, though, plus a little bit of glue, and that's okay. I came real close to ripping the skin, so I'm okay with a little bit of glue that'll take a little while to fall off. So the di device is reassembled, and uh, after I glued everything, I packed it all in with some melted plastic with a 3D pen. Because it really has reached the point where it will never be adjustable again. Hey Joe, how's that blanket going? Pretty good, actually. I found that uh, the original length from here to here was not long enough to reach the floor when draped over his back. If you put this over his back, that's not... it, it needed to go about this much farther. So I did a crochet routine on this on the edges in order to close them because that's not very nice and I'll do the same thing here. You could actually stuff this kind of knitting 
You could actually stuff it with more wool to make a thicker, denser fabric, but I don't want to. Um, so I, I've added a little bone graphic, which is kind of going all gibbled here. It's going to wind up looking more like an X than a bone. I, yeah, I'm not ripping it back over something that, I, I'm just, you know, this is not, this is my dog's blanket. So it's really soft and thick and fuzzy. It's going to keep them nice and warm. And this is what that yarn ball that I showed, that I rolled up in way back in September. This is what it's starting to look like now. Now that I've reached, yeah, hang on a minute. That yarn ball. Here's a neat thing. It's called a Fibonacci Golden Ratio Spiral. And the idea is you use it to help train your eye. Um, when you're taking photography, you can put this up in front of the camera. I 3D printed it. I'm still figuring out what the heck does it all mean. You know? Show us your new blanket, Timmy yeah, Tims. Nice new blanket. We finally finished it, huh? Look at that. <laughs> Look at you. Snugly cozy. Yeah, you like it, huh? It's a Friday morning. November the 2nd. I woke up from a dream I didn't want to get up. Well, that part's... that not... Never mind. I was in this building, which happened to be a church, when they told me that I had earned a humanitarian award. I was like, what? A humanitarian award? Worthless little me? Trying to stabilize the camera. They told me I'd won a humanitarian award. Me. I found that. Well, the word incredible comes to mind. As in, not believable. From the root credibility, to be believed. And the, suff and the prefix in, to reverse it. Incredible that I should be selected for a humanitarian award. And they duly handed me over a certificate, a letter, and one euro. Okay, so it wasn't a fancy pants humanitarian award. It wasn't expensive. I mean, some income had been spent, you know, some money had been spent to create this award because I wasn't the only one euro recipient with two printed pieces of paper. And, after I read the letter, they had gone through everyone's internet history, their public postings. I had been selected for the volume and frequency of my kind advice. I had been given points for caring for nature, because I had my internet activity showed that I had a conviction towards the environment. I had been selected for caring towards people because I had shown compassion and, and, and empathy and love towards others. And there was another one, technology, because I had promoted and shared good technologies. And I think there was politics because I had not become embroiled in partisan politics or or fighting between parties yep yeah, well, that's partisan politics you know and, and I had tried to, to steer that narrow path and for all of this this world committee had awarded me one euro and a humanitarian award and upon waking I thought about it and I thought what a beautiful idea that would be I mean, I don't have the money to hire the people it would take. I mean, they went all the way back to 1998 when I first logged on to the internet. And it would take a fantastic amount of trouble to do that, especially since I have never used my full real name online. Unless I've entered into business with a company, 
so that, you know, there's money involved. I have not told them my last name. And in a lot of cases, I have used not my first name. And then there was the ironic part, as I stared at the certificate made out to my name, Yolanda, and realized my name change was in, in, in was um, imminent, that I would soon be Joseph. And that though I had earned this reward, I wasn't going to get to own it because it was in her name. Not mine. Well, that's kind of sad. But it's okay. But wouldn't that be a lovely idea? To be able to issue humanitarian awards to people around the world, world citizens. To say thank you for trying so damn hard to be a nice person. Really beautiful idea. And I'm going to Facebook it. Well, this I just have to record. I've been practicing. And uh, I just did a run through of Fair Release. Almost error free. So we'll try and repeat that. <laughs> getting a CT scan today because it's six bucks to take a bus there and back and six bucks an hour to park there I'm gonna take the bus because I expect to be there more than an hour it's minus 12 out there this morning oh and I need to bring something to entertain me in the waiting rooms nothing to knit I'll have to think on that I was just working out with Google Maps what to do how to get home on the bus when my phone died. So I went out, I grabbed the next bus that came along. Instead of going down the bridge towards downtown, he turned south. I says, oh, does this bus not go downtown? No, it's going all the way out to Stonegate. Oh, is there a transfer point? Well, no, not really. So I got out at 12 and I walked to Broadway. I think, you know, there's like four or five buses on Broadway all going downtown. A little girl waiting for the bus educates me that in fact that bus just left there's only two and the one she's catching does not go downtown it goes back to the university whence I've come so seeing as I just missed my bus I figure I'll walk so I'm walking downtown I'm downtown now I'm walking home I can't figure out this city transit stuff I just can't figure it out. <coughs> you see, since everybody uses their phone now, there are no printed schedules, no printed maps, no signs, no directions, nothing. Everything's on your phone. And mine can't go a half a day in my pocket turned off without dying. I guess it's time to get a new one or something. So what I'm going to do two more blocks from now there's a nice cafe I'm gonna stop and have a maple whiskey latte really delicious and a little bit of food too and then thus fortified and rested I'll walk the rest of the way home because this bus crap is for the birds it's not working for me I need the exercise anyway but who do I ever need the exercise I get tired so fast now. They're building. And this is the lovely little cafe where I'm going to have a rest. And my first meal since 9 a.m. And then I guess I try to walk the rest of the way home. Or if my phone charges up, maybe I can find out what bus to take the rest of the way home. Well, that was very refreshing. I had a Lox Nest crepe, which is 
smoked t smoked salmon and stuff on a crepe and a maple whiskey latte which is a latte with maple whiskey in it yum 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 now I'm gonna walk home I saw the bus I would take drive past me as I exited the restaurant so even though my phone isn't charged and I couldn't find it anyway there's just no way I'm getting a bus in the time it takes me to walk home so I'm gonna just be tough it's hard I'm getting tired at the point I'm getting as tired as I used to get after eight hours of walking from just 20 minutes of walking but it's only two and a half kilometers I'm sure I can do it okay so these sparkly snowflakes are just so pretty A question for you. What was the rabbit or rabbit says doing here? That is all rabbit tracks. Rabbit tracks in, rabbit tracks out, and no sign of bird wings. Looks like a rabbit did a binky last night. Well, I'm almost home. I've been amusing myself with a pocket speaker and a chaosolator. been kind of pretty and I think I'm gonna make it home without falling on my face bonus I didn't fall. I didn't collapse in exhaustion. I made it. Yeah, that's right. I did. I walked today about, oh, four kilometers, maybe five, four and a half. Yeah, with a big rest in the middle and a meal. But I did it in one day. Whew. This is good. I should try to do that more. I've been blocked since uh, midsummer. I started with more frequent irrigations, increasing my water intake, and so I, I've increased my fiber intake, and it only made it worse, of course, because it's blocked, and so the fiber didn't go anywhere, and so it filled up my gut. So now I'm still blocked, but even more uncomfortable, and bloated. Well, that is the discomfort. I'm bloated. I I tried laxatives. And um, I thought, okay, you know, I've got a whole week ahead of me that I can stay home and deal with the result of the laxatives. Because when things are flowing naturally, so to speak, um, I basically have a lot of leakage, a lot of leaking. You know, it just has a tendency to blow the thing, the sticker, right off my stomach. The sticker can't hold against the contents of my colon. We'll just call it a sticker. You know, it's an appliance. So, while I'm in a car, let's see, I had um, my underwear, my long johns, my pants, my sweater, my coat, and the seatbelt, all between me and putting a little airspace in front of this bag. And I'm in the car, and we're in traffic. What am I supposed to do? I was just a passenger, but, I mean, there's, there's no way to... There, there's, you know, by the time we would have found a place to pull over and find a bathroom, it would have been too late, so we might as well drive on to my appointment and deal with it there, which is what I did. And I wound up changing the whole appliance. And at this point, you know, I've, I haven't had a full-on leak. I mean, I'm just, I've just had threats of leak and a real sense of terror. And um, so it, I spent that day dealing with filling bag and emptying bag and refilling and emptying and cramps and and just feeling sickly but it didn't clear up the block in spite of all that came out the block remained I could feel it it's this 
painful location in my belly. Two painful locations, actually. So I, I, I went back to irrigating daily. And I was having a lot of trouble getting the water in, and there was very little coming out. So I just kept it up. And then I had a few, and, and there was like a little bit coming and going, so I kept eating. And then I had a few days when I just couldn't irrigate because there's just too much going on and, and I didn't have the space and I didn't have the time. And if I don't do it by a certain hour, I know it won't work. So then, you know, I've been trying off and on to irrigate. This morning I was up at 3 a.m. from indigestion, you know, the discomfort of, of my stomach and hot flashes and asthma attacks and by six o'clock I gave up and got up and tried irrigating because that time of the morning has always been my most successful. Could not get so much as a drop of water in. Just nothing. Nothing works. So I just gave up and I got up and just sat around the rest of the day sleep deprived. I finally slept for a few hours in the afternoon but I'm just feeling depressed and useless and powerless. And distressed that I have to try and discuss this with the doctors who were just going to be like, take more laxatives, take more laxatives. Because they're not the ones that are going to have to deal with a lap full of poo. Alright, fresh tea for my SCOBY. And a little leftover fresh tea that I'm going to put in my leather experiment. I'll show you my leather experiment. I, I, it's been on the blog before, but I'll show you again. That's my vegan leather experiment. This bin is full of June tea. And it's taking its sweet time forming a SCOBY. I think because it's a little cool here. And I'm going to very slowly and carefully add the liquid. That went rather well. I was quite gentle. I only disturbed a portion of the existing SCOBY and as you could see it, it there is a SCOBY on top. Gave it a bit of a wave so that the fresh could get out in there and feed the SCOBY. And so here they are, five bottles of stuff. I used to cut it with more juice but I found I was having trouble drinking it fast enough so I put it in the soda stream bottles because it gets fizzy on the second cement ferment like soda pop and these bottles are designed for exactly that kind of pressures. Battery charger. One of those things every household should have. And I remembered that I recently bought a battery booster. I could have just boosted the car and got it going any old time. But it's running now. I'm getting my winter tires changed over and a new battery at a Market Tire downtown. And it may be a long wait so I have to make sure I bring along some entertainment. I don't know what. Once again, should have brought the camera. Didn't. Uh, new battery. Winter tires installed. They also found and replaced a bunch of dead fuses. I think he said it was two or three. And pointed out some wiring issues. So it's pl I'm planning to get back to that project. I've got undercar lights that need to be Resoldered in spots and rewired and, and like just gone over and uh, made working again. But you see, I don't have any way to get the car high enough off the ground to get the pan off to do the work. So I'm thinking in my head, I just wait because I'm planning to build the back of the bus out to take the car and then the ramp that gets the car up on the winch. If I just block the car at that height, that's going to give me the space I need. I, I can work out a way to make it so I can elevate my car. There's the old man munching on fresh greens. This rabbit is 14 years old. Seriously. He's 14. So here's a thing I do sometimes. I actually let him out of his cage. I don't know if he appreciates it or not. Hey Sammy. You a cutie pie. 
What you doing today, Sammy? You watching a parrot on TV? Yeah? You watching Einstein on the TV? Wanna bite the camera? Go ahead. Say something to the camera. <laughs> You are literally close enough to bite the camera. Look at that's his beak. Go ahead, chew on it. That a boy, good boy. Bite it. It can take it. <laughs> All right. I think we're unnerving the poor fella. Would you like scritchies? Scritchies? Yeah. You'll know, be careful scritching this guy. He might fake you out and bite you, and you'd never know. Um, I'm not very trusting of this little parrot. Still got scars from when we first got him, and I was learning that biting is just sort of part of his vocabulary. And then when he bites, he bites hard. Yeah, that's right, hey Sam? You need your toenails trimmed. Yeah, all my animals need to go to the vet, but waiting for more money. Yeah. What do wild parrots do to keep their nails trimmed, huh? Can we simulate that here at the house? Yeah, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yeah. I bought a bunch of candy. See, tomorrow's my birthday, so in respect of that, I thought, well, that's a good excuse to buy these chocolates that I shouldn't be buying. You know, I don't normally need an excuse, but it's always nice when I have one. <laughs> so, but I've switched to a liquid diet because for some reason I stopped pooping. And maybe I could just live on liquid. And maybe if I live on enough liquid, it'll eventually, whatever the heck's going on in there, will eventually just break loose. So that's the current plan. Just, I bought a lot of juices. I mean, I went six months on that the last time. Today I feel like absolute hell. It was Yesterday was a hard day. And now I have a headache and um, I'm just kind of tired all over. Look who's been sneaking up. Gotta watch out for this guy. One time I was sitting on the couch and I was just relaxing and I did this with my hair to put it on the back of the couch and he caught my hand right at this point and just chewed on me. You're a little chewer, aren't you, Sammy? You're a little chewer? Do you give kisses? Give me a kiss. <laughs> I just don't trust him. You don't trust me. <laughs> We're roommates. I just don't pick you up, do I? <laughs> Let me kiss him. <laughs> it's that one day a year when it's everybody acts like it's supposed to be significant, but it isn't. It's just another flippin' day, and for me, it's a day when people are walking around talking about war and death and mourning and all the unhappy people in the world. So. I've never appreciated November in the first place being the start of winter. So I've turned off all of my birthday notifications, but Facebook went and turned it back on sometime this year. And I'm get I started getting all these these, you know, happy birthdays from people and it's you know, all I do is I just copy and paste the word thank you over and over again to be you know, to show some manners.